In the previous video I showed you how to build a crude FM receiver circuit in order to replace my old bulky radio. But needless to say it was more like an experiment than an actual functional radio I would use every day. So in this video let's combine a super heterodyne receiver the TEA5767 with a couple of complementary parts to build a rather nice looking small radio with decent audio quality. The FM frequency and volume can be controlled with the help of a rotary encoder and through the integrated lithium ion cell with charging circuits this radio can play its tunes up to 10 hours continuously. Let's get started. For the prototype of the radio I will use an Arduino Nano as the brains of the organization, but later on I will switch to an Arduino Pro Mini to save a bit of space. The first part I then added to the setup was the TEA5767 and such a super heterodyne receiver uses a local oscillator mixed with the radio frequency signal to create an intermediate frequency signal, which is then filtered, amplified and demodulated. It all sounds complicated, but the IC is fairly easy to control. Make sure to watch my I2C video if you don't know how to do that or how to connect the IC to the Arduino. The only thing I changed in the code to simplify programming later on was adding a function that converts the frequency value into the hexadecimal values and sending the rest of the necessary bytes as well. Then I hooked up a long wire as an antenna which will later be replaced by a retractable antenna. And since I don't want to and also can't use earbuds directly with the IC, I had to use an appropriate 5 volt audio amp. I went with this TDA1905 5 watt amp which offers a recommended application schematic in its datasheet. Only downside is that the circuit requires a couple of external passive components, which caused a space problem in the layout of my final circuit. I also experienced distortion problems while building up the schematic on my breadboards. So in retrospective it would have been way easier and even more power efficient to just use a small pre-made 5 volt class D audio amp. But nevertheless after the amp assembly was complete I had to choose a speaker from my collection of salvaged ones. Those small 4 ohm speakers were still in good shape and after connecting a capacitor to one of them, hooking it up to the audio amp and uploading the codes it did its job just fine. Now in order to control the volume I used the MCP4151 8-bit 10 kilo ohm digital potentiometer. It uses the SPI communication interface to set its wire position, which means two things. Firstly it needs to connect to the predetermined SPI pins of the Arduino in order to work correctly. And secondly we can easily use the SPI library to send out values between 0 and 255. Here I'm using a simple for loop to slowly increase the send value which therefore increases the resistance between one side of the potentiometer and the wiper. By connecting the audio outputs of the FMIC to one side of the potentiometer, ground to the other side and the wiper to the input of the audio amp, it acts like a voltage divider which can decrease the peak to peak voltage of the audio signal and thus the volume. Next I wanted to choose those send values easily. So I went with a rotary encoder. By connecting 5V power to it and hooking its data and clock line up to my oscilloscope we can see that by turning the shaft clockwise the data line falls down to ground for a short period of time before the clock line does. Opposed to this if I turn the shaft counterclockwise the clock line gets pulled to ground before the data line. This behavior can be used in our favor by the interrupt pins 2 and 3 of the Arduino. An interrupt basically monitors the state of the input pin constantly and once it changes by falling or rising it executes a function which in my case finds out whether we turn the knob clockwise or counterclockwise. This way we can increase or decrease the volume value which is shown here through the serial monitor. But as you might have already noticed sometimes the value jumps up or down many times through one simple turn. Which is not right. This occurrence is called bouncing and can easily be fixed the hardware way by adding a capacitor between the pin and ground. Lastly we need an LC display in order to see what the current FM and volume settings are. 
I hooked it up the usual way, but needed to use other pins than the recommended ones from the Liquid Display Library. Nevertheless, it worked like a charm after fine-tuning the contrast with a potentiometer. At the end of this prototype assembly, I connected the built-in switch of my rotary encoder to pin D4 with a pull-up resistor and a debounce capacitor to switch between the FM and volume range. After completing the codes by implementing maximum and minimum values, the radio is complete, if you want to use it on a breadboard. But since I don't want to do that, I got myself a lithium ion cell, hooked it up to a TP4056 charging and protection circuit and connected its output to an MT3608 voltage booster. Make sure to adjust its output voltage to around 5 volts through its potentiometer before powering the breadboard circuit with it. Now that everything works just as planned, I freed my breadboard from the wire and component chaos, sorted all the parts for the build and completed my schematic. To make the circuit permanent, I used a perf board with copper dots, which I snapped to a size of around 8.2 by 7.6 cm. Then I attached male headers to my Arduino Pro Mini and also soldered 10 pin and 5 pin female headers onto the board. These will later be used for the LCD and rotary encoder, which both got wires fixed to the pins while the other side of the wires receive male headers with shrinking tube to avoid shorts. Afterwards, I soldered in the TEA5767, the remaining IC sockets and the boost converter. And at this point, it was basically an act of connecting all the pins to each other according to the schematic through silver copper wire or later on through thin flexible wire. Of course you can find the schematic, codes, a parts list and better pictures in the video description to easily rebuild this project. After 4 hours of soldering, the perf board assembly was finally complete and by hooking it up to 4 volt power, I was capable of uploading the code to the Arduino through an FTDI breakout and surprisingly everything still worked even on the first try. And with that being said, we also need to build an awesome case in the next part. Check back for part 2 in one week, until then don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.